<clears throat> Alright guys, we'll be watching Alaska Doomsday Weapon, SCP-804, World Without Man, <clears throat> and um, yeah, this is by SCP Explained, I'll leave a link in the description down below, and if I'm into react to anything else like this, just comment down below, and let's get into this. Art, as it has been said, is often subjective. Whether it's a sculpture, an oil painting from the Renaissance, a renowned work of literature, a digitally drawn webcomic, or an insightful animated YouTube video about SCP Foundation lore, the deeper meaning yeah. behind a piece of art can often change depending on the individual observing it. Sometimes an artist intentionally makes the message of their artwork clear, hoping to have its meaning be unmistakable to any and all that might see it. Other times, such a meaning can be more ambiguous, harder to decipher without some serious thought. But either way, art is an important way that human beings interpret the world around us. It can be a reflection of emotions, experiences, history, and every new creation is as legitimate a piece of art as the last. But even with that being said, there may be no piece of art that is a better reflection of the world around us than SCP-804 or to use its alternative title, The World Without Man. As you might have already guessed, SCP-804 is an art installation, or at the very least is what's left of an art installation. The piece itself, which was unveiled in Alaska, was created by a group of artists known by the name Inelmat Parmashta Maelmashta, a Finnish phrase which translates to dreams of a better world in oh. English. A fitting, highly appropriate name for a group that created SCP-804, given the subject of the piece. All that remains of the artwork itself is a portion of a once larger statue, sculpted to resemble the shape of a globe. Following extensive examination by the SCP Foundation's researchers, this globe has been determined to be most likely a recreation of our very own planet Earth. Originally, this globe was a large, clear model of Earth that also featured a number of smaller globes and video equipment inside of it. It appears then that this art installation may have been intended to function as a projector of sorts, displaying varying images of scenes from around the world. These images would have primarily focused on deserted and run-down areas of human society, such as abandoned buildings and decaying landmarks. The art piece seems to have depicted how even when we reshape our world and build cities, we can damage the planet's fragile ecosystem. This is especially yep. prevalent when things we build are then later left empty, buildings rotting away, structures neglected to waste, this mass destruction of nature all in vain. These images would then have been contrasted with projections that show parts of the natural world that have yet to be touched by human beings serene, beautiful places like the corners of the Amazon rainforest or the deepest stretches of our oceans. The message of the piece? Well, we can only speculate, but it seems as if it played a role in highlighting the difference between the modern and natural world. So what could be so important about one leftover piece of a statue? How about this? When it was first unveiled, SCP-804 was able to produce a massive destructive force one in which plenty of people were present to witness. The Foundation has uncovered a number of documents about World Without Man from the artist's website, but they stepped in to clear up what happened after SCP-804 was revealed. Among those present when the piece was displayed were an audience of prominent environmental activists who were well known throughout the world for their efforts to alert people to the threats facing our environment, and would likely be the ones that the message of World Without Man would resonate with the most. Of course, we doubt that the SCP Foundation is all that interested in the artistic value of SCP-804, or its message of protecting the environment for that matter. What happened next was probably more likely to be what caught their interest. From the moment it was activated, SCP-804's destructive properties were unleashed, and it is still unclear if this was intentional or not. Had the members of Inelmat Parmashta Maelmashta planned to unfurl chaos at the revealing of their masterpiece? Or was World Without Man sabotaged by someone who disagreed with its deeper meaning? It is hard to say. The only thing that the Foundation knows for certain is that no one survived. Anyone present during the incident was killed where they stood, and those responsible for creating SCP-804 either went into hiding or perished themselves. 
When activated, the smaller globes within SCP-804's larger one began to rotate, causing the display of its destructive and anomalous properties. The sculpture itself causes any man-made devices or artifacts within a 100-meter radius to stop working. Everything from phones and tablets to clothing, plastic, buildings, and even synthetic chemical compounds will begin to deteriorate, decay, and even disintegrate. If something is more advanced than a sharpened stick of wood, SCP-804 can destroy it. The longer World Without Man remains active, the wider its area of effect, and the stronger its destructive power will be. However, its ability to destroy any man-made object is always strongest closer to the source, right next to the globe of the sculpture. Sounds pretty inconvenient to be subjected to losing your clothes and personal belongings if you stand too close, but still harmless, right? Right? SCP-804 also has an adverse destructive effect on human beings. Oh, damn. Tissue cells will also deteriorate in the same way if they are within the radius of World Without Man. However, this happened- Why do all SCPs hate humans? Like, come on now. I mean, there's a couple of good ones, but still. It's much slower than when the sculpture disintegrates man-made matter. People standing too close will be painfully and excruciatingly broken Damn. down cell by cell. A victim of SCP-804 will gradually lose body mass bit by bit until only their skeleton remains. But it does not stop there. The effects of the anomalous art piece will continue even after death, dissolving bone, organs, muscle, and marrow into their most basic atomic components until truly nothing remains. Interestingly, Damn. there are ways to survive an encounter with the anomalous effects of SCP-804. The first is to, well, not be a human being. Anything non-human, including all forms of animal and plant life, will be left unharmed by the sculpture. So if you can somehow think of a quick way to transform yourself into a bird or a hydrangea, you would manage to escape unscathed. In theory, at least. Speaking of escaping, though, even if you were caught in SCP-804's area of effect, there is a chance you could still survive if you got far enough away before your entire body was turned to dust. Though drastic, it is possible to recover from World Without Man's human tissue damage, given the proper circumstances and volume of medical care. During the SCP Foundation's testing, those who have survived have suffered symptoms similar to those of extreme and prolonged starvation. Creating a sculpture that sends out a shockwave capable of destroying all man-made materials and any human beings within 100 meters of its source is certainly one hell of a way to get the deeper message of your artwork across. But that might have you thinking, if SCP-804 is a piece of art, and it was created by the members of an art collective, then isn't World Without Man also technically man-made? And you would be correct in thinking that. Through prolonged testing of the device, the SCP Foundation has determined that SCP-804 is not immune to its own destructive effects. Since oh. its first activation, and over the course of the Foundation's rigorous examination of it, the sculpture's capabilities have become impaired. However, this does not make it any less dangerous. If someone was somehow able to repair SCP-804, perhaps reunited with the statue it was originally a part of, then the threat it would pose to the modern world would be astronomical. How bad would the damage be? Well, let's put it this way. If SCP-804 was able to remain fully active without suffering its own effects, then this anomalous artwork could easily wipe any and all traces of humanity from the face of planet Earth in a matter of weeks. You could be forgiven for thinking that destroying man-made artifacts and disintegrating human tissue was the worst that SCP-804 can do, but you would be wrong yet again. The Foundation's top researchers have theorized that World Without Man also possess some form of mimetic effect, that SCP-804 is able to mentally influence people, possibly creating a compulsion among those who view it. However, they are still uncertain of this, and testing is currently focused on if this effect has also been weakened by SCP-804's gradual decay. But back to when this destructive piece of art was first discovered. Unelmet Paramashta Mailmashta had unveiled World Without Man at an art show in Alaska. 
Around five minutes after SCP-804 initially activated, a nearby remote town in northern Alaska was the first to feel the effects. The residents were panicked, calling for emergency services. After all, wouldn't you be afraid if you realized that you were starting to disintegrate along with your home and all of your possessions? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the town was too remote of a location for anyone to properly respond. A single light aircraft was the first on the scene, and the pilot witnessed firsthand as the entire town was rapidly wiped out. By the time the Foundation heard about the situation and dispatched its agents to the location, there was nothing left. Not one home, nor any living person. SCP-804 had been active for almost eight straight hours, and the nearby Alaskan town had been wiped clean of any and all traces of human civilization. The Foundation's agents traced the epicenter of SCP-804's destructive effect back to where it had been unveiled, only to discover that survivors from the nearby town had gathered around what was left of the sculpture. Many of them were already suffering from hypothermia, as well as being severely affected by the device in other ways. Somehow, these survivors were being compelled to approach SCP-804 and push the globe within to reactivate its effect. If one died, another would step forward from the group to take their place. Those around the sculpture would cheer and encourage them to maintain the anomalous artwork, praising them for keeping it running despite what SCP-804 was doing to them. Under the orders of an O5 council member, the Foundation's agents on site opened fire on the crowd, their bullets disintegrating from the statue's effect, but still managing to cause lethal wounds. As the globe stopped spinning, the effects of SCP-804 ended, and the agents were able to move in and secure the sculpture. Many of the survivors then opted to lie down in the snow, letting their injuries and the cold kill them. Any that were arrested by the Foundation refused to respond to questioning. Given that any Foundation facility would be man-made in nature, it was decided that SCP-804 would be best left where it was, allowing the Alaskan cold to freeze its machinery. A handful of Foundation guards were left on site as well, just in case anyone decided to come looking for World Without Man and try to reactivate the anomalous piece of art. Additionally, the Foundation wanted the remains of the device kept away from their facilities until they could figure out if or how it had compelled people to keep it active. Dr. Johannes Sorts of the SCP Foundation investigated the mimetic properties of SCP-804, and according to his findings, there is nothing especially virulent or dangerous about SCP-804's mimetic properties. Only a few select personality types have any desire to reactivate the device. We've been looking at this all wrong. There is no magical compulsion that could drive so many people to destroy themselves. There does not need to be. The artist and activist group Inelmat Parmashta Mailmashta had created a device capable of wiping out all traces of human life on Earth. It could turn buildings and people to dust, making any that were left keeping it spinning, no matter if it killed them. It was made to represent an ideal, the cure for the planet from the disease of humanity. But why would these activists unleash it on a town full of innocent people? If they knew this machine had the potential to wipe out all human life on Earth, why activate it, killing themselves too? The answer is simple, because they wanted to. They intended to send a message. What but the, the real question is, are we smart enough to listen to it? Now go check out SCP-2317, wow. The Devourer of Worlds, A Door to Another World, and SCP- <clears throat> Um, wow. Okay, World Without Man. Um, come down below, how would you, I guess, secure and contain this SCP? And, with that being said, uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and goodbye.